It's 724 now and around town. Factory week continues here on Good Day Columbus. Yeah, we've been to the milk. We've done milk, Jug. beer. Yeah. And today, Pepsi. Live at the G&J Pepsi Cola in Northeast Columbus. What are you looking at? Look at, so Jessica, I'm just checking out this gigantic factory here, G&J Pepsi, halfway through our factory week, and this is so cool. We're going to see the whole process this morning, from bottling to canning to filling, and one guy that's going to talk a little bit about the history is Duffy with G&J. How's it going, Duffy? Good, how are you, Cameron? Good. So how long has this company been in our city? Well, welcome to G&J. Oh, thank you. Uh, G&J's been in Columbus for 50 years. Okay. We've been in business for over 90 years, producing Pepsi bottling uh, products throughout Ohio and Northern Kentucky. Wow. So yeah. what all do you cover as far as the different drinks and how far is your reach? Yeah, well, we cover, uh, like I said, Central Ohio down through Northern Kentucky, including okay. Lexington. Yeah, we make everything from uh, Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Diet Mountain Dew, Aquafina, uh, Dr. Pepper, and we also sell and distribute Starbucks, Gatorade, Lipton. Whoa. Yeah, we have a very broad a range of products, both carbonated products, which are bubbles, and yeah. non-carbonated products, which are the new health and wellness trends. So how big is this plant? This plant you're seeing right here is about 270,000 square feet. 275,000. Yes. And you can see the entire, you can see the storage over there. You can see where everything's getting shipped out. And we're going to check out the process this morning. But I have to ask you one question. Sure. What is your favorite Pepsi drink? Mine is Diet Mountain Dew. You like Diet Mountain Dew. Very nice. We're going to toss it back to you guys in the studio. Factory week. I think up next we're talking about the innovation and the testing and everything. So oh. stand by for that. Cam, thanks. It is Factory Week, and Cameron is finding out how products we have in our home every day are made right here at home. So this morning, he is live at G&J Pepsi Cola. Hey, Cam. Hey, Adam. So this is really cool. We're going behind the scenes right now. We're back with Duffy to talk about the innovation and show you and taste some products that haven't even been released yet by Pepsi. So, Duffy, first, how is Pepsi always trying to stay on top of the trends and really make sure they give a product that people actually want to drink? Yeah, Cam, innovation is incredibly important to Pepsi both our packaging and marketing, but also with brands and flavors. We're always trying to keep up with the current trends with mm -hmm. millennials. Millennials are really driving a lot of this That's that innovation. target audience. That's a target audience. They, for years now, have been mixing, especially on the fountain side of the business, they've been mixing multiple different flavors. Oh. And so Pepsi has taken that lead, and we've actually introduced some products such as do USA this summer will be coming out. This is a mix of three different mountains. So no flavors. one, the public has not had a sip of this no, yet. No, you might be the first guy. I can take a sip of sure, it? Sure, yeah. Okay, absolutely. so this is Do USA. It's yeah. coming out this summer. Yeah, there'll be and, a limited um, time offer just for eight weeks in the market. Let's see, here we go. What do you, you think? know what that tastes like? What? A bomb pop. You're right on. You know the popsicle? Yeah, sure, is that yeah, what it is? Yeah, oh, my gosh. Yeah. So there we go. You know, Good Day Columbus. We get exclusive tastings here. <laughs> and you also have a new cold brew that's coming right. out. Again, how cool is it that you get to taste it beforehand, yeah. uh, before the public does it? And a lot of research has Absolutely, gone into yeah. this, right? Here at G&J, we're incredibly proud to have brands like Starbucks and Gatorade, national brands or mega brands. Cold brew is predicted to surpass hot brew coffee sales by 2020. Ooh. So this is not iced coffee. This is cold brew. It's actually uh, aged for 12 weeks before they actually bottled it. Wow, this is yeah. so cool. So again, getting a first preview. This comes out in March, and right. then this comes out in May. Correct. Well, I guess we got to lock them up now. I can't. I got to take these home and not let anybody else drink them. You okay. Keep them. That's good stuff. All right. Coming up next in our next segment, we're going to go inside the factory to see the process, the bottling, the canning, everything, all after the break. We'll see you soon. 825 right now, and Cameron Fontana, he is continuing his tour of Central Ohio factories this week. This morning, he's at the Pepsi bottling plant in East Columbus. So, are they letting you try new things? Hey, that's right, Marshall. So, we're just going in here. I know the, the volume is very, very loud, but this is so exciting. We got to try some new drinks coming out later this summer. But right now, we're talking about the bottling process with Mike. How's it going? Good. So this is really cool. What you're seeing right now are tiny little bottles that eventually become the molds, correct? Those preforms will become the bottles, the Mountain wow. Dew bottles. So as Edwin walks down here, this is the machine that actually expands it. How does it do that? It takes the preform and heats that preform from the neck down. We then insert it, we, we heat it from the neck down, then we insert it into the mold. Yeah. A stretch rod comes down into the mold under high pressure, it blows it in 0.13 seconds. So we're running these bottles at 720 bottles a minute. 720 a minute? 720 a minute. Wow, and when you come in here, it's visually so exciting because you see all these bottles flying around. Let's move over because I also like to see how the labels are put on. Yes, the labels come in a, 
in a long roll. Okay. We take that long roll and we cut it to length. We glue the, the lead edge and the lap edge and wrap it around the bottle, and then it goes off to our palletizer. That's amazing. Now, I'm seeing Mountain Dew right now. Um, how hard is this to switch out should you do a different Pepsi product? It's, it's very easy. It yeah. takes us about 13 minutes to switch over from label to label. Absolute efficiency, it sounds like. It is. It's very efficient. When you come in here and you just see the bottles flying everywhere, it really makes you feel like a kid again. I just want to play with it all. It does. It makes me feel good. This is so neat. So what's the next step in the process that we're going to see in the following segment? So in the, in the next segment, yep. we'll see these bottles that are already blown and already labeled, and we'll see them filled. This is so sweet, guys. We're going to throw it back to you. Look, I just love how they shoot across at like a million miles an hour. Oh, of course, I come when there's no one. I think they're, they're right down there. <laughs> it's so Timing fast, you can't see it. Can. <laughs> it's too loud in there. No one can hear it. You know, there's not a whole lot that tastes better on a cold day than a, or make it a hot day than a cold soda, right? Also, Any day. <laughs> soda with pizza oh, You're is right. my favorite. You are right. And since it is so warm out, Cameron is checking out the Pepsi bottling plant in East Columbus because, yeah, it's warm out there. You might want a cold drink today. Yeah, that's right, Jessica. So we saw in the last segment uh, how the bottles were actually blown and made from the pre-molds, but now we're seeing exactly how they're filled up. How's it going, Mike? Good. Okay, so we have a different building, new bottles in. What goes into the bottles exactly, like the percentage of each? Well, we take uh, syrup and water and blend it at a five to one ratio. Okay. And then we inject CO2 into it. Now we do that at a cold temperature, about 36 degrees. Why is that? It, it helps incorporate the CO2 into the beverage. So once you have it, you can actually see it injecting right there. And I'm just amazed at how quickly and how efficient these machines all run. Yeah, we're running about uh, 800 bottles a minute on this filler right now with 20 ounce. And what are these machines handling right here? The filling? Yes, we're, we're filling the product right now. We're also capping the product. Oh, so you have the caps up here. Yeah. Oh, look at this. So we go to the top. And it looks like little green ants kind of going down in the assembly line. Just about those, uh, yes. That is sweet. So we go right around here. Uh, what's the next step for these bottles? Where are they traveling right now? Well, the next step is we warm the bottles to break the dew point because we don't want the bottles sweating. Oh, you mean so, like so the mountain dew point? That's yeah, the mountain dew point. That's correct. So how hard is it to actually get that temperature right? Is it something you have to continually watch and maintain? No, it's very sophisticated equipment. Yeah. So we... Uh, we let the equipment do its job. Oh my God. So here's a cold Mountain Dew right off Did the line. Did you just grab this, Edwin? Off would the line. Like, would you like to taste oh, it? Oh, absolutely. Let me do Great. this. So this is as fresh as it gets. This is fresh so as it gets. So what's the time frame, Mike, uh, when you make the bottles here, using my strength here, so when someone can drink it, like how long does it take? Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's very quick. In this market, Yeah. this is a great Mountain Dew market, so it's very quick. So Ooh, that's I, fresh. I say it's less than a week. Wow. Perfect carbonation, guys. I don't think it gets any better balance than that. That's amazing. Woo! Woo! You don't have to ask me twice to have a do. <laughs> <laughs> I like the dew. Well, you know who else is enjoying refreshing beverages this morning? It's Cameron Fontana. He is at the Pepsi bottling plant here in Columbus. Hey, that's right, Sean. So coming up next, we are taking a look at the canning side of the bottling process. If you can see right here, here's some Pepsi cans going down. And something you might not know is that they fill these cans without the lids on. Look at that. Whoa. Whoa. Interesting. Interesting news. Damn. All right, we'll check in with, the, with Cam again in a few minutes. Let's go pretty quick. Around town, it's factory week. Cameron Fontana, he is checking out the Pepsi bottling company to see how things work there. Good morning, Cam. Maybe. A little bit of a secret that they put the soda into the cans without the lid, but now we're seeing the cans with the lid on. What's this step in the process, Mike? The, the conveying system comes down, we go through a warmer to break the dew point okay. so that the product doesn't sweat in a package, otherwise it would mold and mildew the package. Right. We then convey it uh, to one of the three packers that we have, and those packers can do anything from a 12 pack to a 15 pack to 18 pack wow. to 24 pack to 30 pack to 36 pack. This is amazing. It's mesmerizing to see all the little cans get in order. And then so this is, you mentioned, getting ready for the packaging. So 
What's automated right here? Everything is automated right yeah. here. The conveying system is automated. Uh, the, the packaging machine will open up the package and all the cans will be pushed into the package. We then glue the package, we compress the package, put the code date on it, and then we go uh, to uh, palletizing. Look at that, and you can see the system closes it. And one thing, it's on the other side. You guys put glue on these as well, right? Little dots of glue? Yes, we put glue on the tops of the packages, so when we palletize them, they don't slide around on the pallets. Look at that. And then from here, where do these boxes go? From here, we palletize them, and then we store them in the warehouse. So we've got about 500,000 cases in our warehouse. 500,000, and Edwin, you can kind of see in the back the huge walls of soda boxes over there. And then, what's the variety? You mentioned it's like 150 different types of packaging. Well, that's what we package here is about 150 different different uh, SKUs, but we have over 500 SKUs in the warehouse. Nice. Oh, is this the glue that we were talking about? Yes, this is the top glue right here. So I want to do this. You can hear this little tick in there. I'm going to put the mic up next to it, and you can hear the little drops of glue being put on the boxes. That way they don't slide. Hear this. Nice. That is so cool. And then there's scanners all around making sure that there's no defects in it. There's nothing wrong with them, right? Yes, we inspect every package that comes through. If there's a can that, that doesn't have the right bill level, it'll kick it right off. It won't even go in the package. Amazing. Well, we're learning more and more during factory week, guys. We're going to toss it back to you, and I'm just going to follow every one of these. I'm going to start counting, I think. Do the do, Cam. <laughs> do the do. The thing about Mountain Dew is it goes down too quickly. Eight minutes now before 10 o'clock, and it's factory week on Good Day Columbus, so we are continuing our look inside some local factories. By way of Cameron Fontana, he spent the morning at the Pepsi Bottling Company in East Columbus, Gene J. Pepsi. Hey, Cam. Hey, guys. Well, it's been a very exciting morning for factory week here at Gene J. Pepsi. We're seeing the last step in the process for these cans. Now, Mike, what's happening along this assembly line? As the cases come out of the packer, they're conveyed to these palletizers. Uh -huh. And these palletizers will stack the product onto a pallet okay. and, then, and then eject it out of the palletizer so that the forklift drivers can come along, pick it up, and put it into the warehouse. And what's really neat is you can see these bars come down here is that this machine is churning them in a specific order for the stack, right? Yes, each, each layer is a sp specific order and the orientation is different on every other layer. So it locks that layer onto the pallet. So that way we, you're not carrying it and then you have like a movie scene when a hundred cases just start exploding and spraying everywhere. Exactly. Uh, in this entire warehouse, I just see stacks and walls and mountains of boxes. How much are you holding right now or how much can this hold? We, we have about a uh, half a million cases on inventory right now. This warehouse can hold about 650,000 cases. Wow. And how long does this inventory last in here? It lasts about a week. A if week? We, if we stop producing and we stop bringing product in, we'd be empty in about a week's time. Oh my gosh, so in a week's time, completely new inventory and product in here. Now, they're doing so much more than just making products for Pepsi. Duffy, what are you guys doing in the community as well? Yeah, Cameron, we're very proud to be part of the community. We're, we partner with great venues such as Columbus Blue Jackets, the Columbus Tourist Sea, COSI, uh, Kappa, the Aquarium, the Zoo. And then locally, we get involved with the community, like in the Linden area here, we're, we've teamed up with St. Stephen's Community House. It's a great organization where we provide uh, resources and time and talent there as well. That's awesome. And one thing I didn't get to mention, uh, Mike, you said, is it 97% recyclability rate? Was that it? 97% landfill free. We, our sustainability effort here is phenomenal. Wow. We recycle about 39 different items out of this awesome. facility. Well, this has been such a fun morning, guys. Give me a high five. Mike. Duffy, okay. Edwin will take that Dr. Pepper. Uh, guys, Marshall, uh, in the studio, what do you guys want? Uh, we'll just take entire walls for the studio. How about that? That'll work. <laughs> That'll be fine. Isn't that neat? How they do that? The mechanicals are incredible. I mean, the, the, the thought process it takes to design the mechanicals to put all those things together, right? Just blows my mind.